Word of God. Today we're going to begin a new study. We're going to talk about overcomers. What does it mean to be an overcomer? Go ahead and grab your Bible if you've not already done so. Let's get ready for these next few minutes as we begin to open up the Word of God and as we begin to understand how God has made it possible that we could live victorious even in the midst of a fallen and what appears oftentimes to be a defeated world. Let's pray as we ask God's blessing upon our time and ask God's uh, opening of our understanding. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we pause today to give you thanks for yet another day, another privilege and opportunity to set at your feet in the study of your word. We recognize that we can do nothing without you. And so, Father, we ask today that you'd open up our hearts, our minds, our understanding, that we might hear your word. Help us not to be only hearers, but also cause us to be doers of your word. And we thank you for the victory that we have through your son, Jesus Christ. In the wonderful, loving, powerful, powerful and matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we do pray. Amen. Listen, I hope you are excited. Um, once again, we've just come out of Mother's Day and we continue to salute all of our mothers and thank mothers for everything that they have done and all they've poured into us. In addition, all of our frontline workers, essential workers, all of our medical staff, so many people who in this season have been such a tremendous blessing to all of humanity and for that we are grateful and we are thankful. Today, we begin this Bible study in what I feel is such an appropriate study and topic as we talk about overcomers, being an overcomer, and what does it mean to be an overcomer? I hope you have your Bibles with you. We're getting ready to go into the Word of God. Let me give these uh, initial and introductory remarks simply by saying that if you've been paying attention, and I'm sure most of us have, to the events that have taken place over the past few months, one of the things we have noticed is that life has taken drastic twists and turns. You have said it, I have said it, we have heard it. No one who is alive has ever seen times like the times in which we are living in and are experiencing today a pandemic, not an epidemic, a pandemic that has touched every inch of this entire globe. I tell you, if we could have script life, if we could have written our own version of life, we would not have included the challenging times that we are facing right now. And you know, it's easy to get caught up in doing things and going about everyday life, not thinking that things are going to change. But let me tell you, one little event can shatter our entire life. And one of the things I've learned is that even as a believer, if you're not careful, people who are faithful and strong, their faith can be shaken in the matter of a moment. And the truth is what we must learn and what we must remember is that no matter what happens, no matter what we face, no matter what comes our way or come against us, we cannot forget that in Jesus Christ, we already have the victory. Listen, if you don't remember my saying anything else, I want you to know that as the people of God, no matter what we face, no matter the magnitude or the latitude of what you are experiencing and going through, you want to say to yourself, we already have the victory in Jesus Christ. Come on, open your Bibles. We're going to open our Bibles first. We're going to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 26. Chapter 15, verse 26. Here's what the Bible says. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. <laughs> Did y'all catch that? The last enemy that should be destroyed is death. What does that mean? It means that Christ has won the victory for you and I at Calvary. And listen, Christ has won the victory over 
every enemy to include the last enemy. If you would stack up, if you would make a list, a laundry list of every enemy that you have, the ultimate enemy, the last enemy, the, the ultimate enemy that we may put down would be death, which means this. Jesus has already won the victory. Listen, he didn't just win it, but he won it for us at Calvary. And he won it over every enemy. That means over everything, anything you and I would ever face, anything that would ever come against us. He has won the victory over and he has put down the last enemy that is death. Which means this. Christ has the authority over everything. Listen, I don't need you to get this. He's got the authority over everything. Matthew's gospel chapter 28 and we say this so often verse 18 and Jesus came and spoke unto them that is Matthew's gospel chapter 28 verse 18 you may very well know that verse it says Jesus spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth if you would underline two words in your Bible all power Then, when it says that he has been given all power it is impossible for Jesus to have all power and anything else to have some power if he has all power it means that he has ultimate power which means that he has authority over everything listen in heaven and in earth. That's enough to shout about right there. If you could really grab that, catch that understanding. He's got all power in heaven and earth. God has made everything, the Bible says, subject unto Christ. Turning your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 27. We read earlier 15, 26. So he says in verse 27, for he hath put all things under his feet. But when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. God has put everything under the authority of Jesus. We are, we are devastated by this COVID-19 virus. But I want to remind you today that even COVID-19 is placed under the authority of Jesus. And you got to understand while the world was so unprepared, unready, while we were caught off guard earlier part of this year with this terrible virus, it did not catch God off guard. And because it did not catch God off guard, God is in control. Nothing will ever catch God off guard. Why? Because he is in control of everything. Turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Here's what the Bible says. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, and making manifest the savior of his knowledge by us in every place. So here's what that means. He says, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph. I really need you to catch that. God does not allow us to triumph sometime, but the Bible says he always causes us to triumph. That means you don't ever have to lose a battle. Why? Because God always causes us to triumph. God is not a hit and miss God. We don't triumph or have victory sometimes. But the Bible says he always causes us to triumph. And I want you to know today that simply by being in relationship with Jesus Christ, God has already set your legacy as an overcomer. I need you to catch that. God has set your legacy 
as an overcomer. Now, the problem with most of us is that we operate on the basis of our feelings as opposed to operating on the basis of God's word. Let me take it another step further. Sometimes we operate on the basis of our condition and situation as opposed to operating on the basis of God's word. There are moments in time when we do not feel like we are winners. And sometimes when we look at the condition and the situation in which we find ourselves, we feel and it looks like we have been defeated. But you can't be defeated when God has already declared that you are an overcomer. Now, what you got to understand is in life, we're going to always have battles. We're going to always. I know this COVID-19 is a terrible battle. But listen, it's not the first time that many of us or all of us who's listening to me today have been in battle. We are always in battle. Listen, life have obstacles that you and I must overcome daily. I know it, I know it. I know you would wish you would come to the day where you don't have to struggle, where you don't have to fight, where there is not some enemy that is rising up against you. You know, there's a passage of the Bible that says, and the Philistines made war again against Israel. Every time Israel uh, turned around, the Philistines were still coming out against them. And though they had defeated the Philistines over and again, the Philistines continued to come against them. And so it is in your life and in my life, without regard to the number of victories we have under our belt, the number of battles we have won, the true child of God is that you and I will always have battles to fight. We will always have enemies to overcome. We will always have obstacles that we must have to go over. You know, let me just name a few of them. There is always anxiety and fear. So many things can creep up that will instigate fear. There is a sense sometimes of hopelessness and there are seasons of difficult situations. Somebody is in a season of difficulty right now. There are the uncertainties and everything right now is so uncertain. And I want to say this, one of the things we are hearing is that life won't ever go back to what we have been accustomed to. If you are expecting to return to work as usual, to church as usual, to some other area of your life, we're being told that life won't ever be what we have known. Does that make us defeated? No, it does not make us defeated. It may be that we are facing some uncertainty. It may be that we are facing the unknown. But guess what? We are not defeated. Defeated. Don't think that because things don't go back to where they used to be that you have been defeated. No, I want to tell you something. Listen, get ready because I feel like God's about to do a brand new thing. Did you hear me? I said God's about to do a brand new thing. You know, we have, we have to overcome loss and grief. We have invisible enemies that's working in the unseen world. That's what we deal with day in and day out. There has never been a time, nor will there ever be a time until the church is raptured and we go back home to be with Jesus Christ that we will not have to fight and wrestle and struggle with the enemies in this world. Listen, the enemy will not rest until he has ultimately been subdued by Jesus Christ. But what we do know as believers is that the enemy has no power. He only has, he doesn't have enough sense to stop fighting. He keeps right on being defeated time and time again. Now, the problem with us oftentimes is that when it comes to defeat and victory, the lines are so often blurred. Turn with me to Psalm 6, Psalm number 6, verse number 7. That is, turn in your Bibles with me to Psalm number 6, verse number 7. Psalm number 6, verse number 7. And this, this is what the psalmist says in that 7th verse of uh, the 6th Psalm. The psalmist says simply this. The psalmist says, 
um, my eyes is consumed because of grief. It wax old because of all mine enemies. <laughs> Did you catch that? The psalmist says, I am weary with my groaning. All the night make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with my tears. My eyes is consumed because of grief. So much of life has brought out of us so many tears. Here it is. It wax old because of all mind enemies. Now, if you're like me, if I'm, I'm a little older than I used to be, and I've got to be honest, I, I have to wear eyeglasses to be able to see. Some of you have eyeglasses and bifocus. Some of you got contact lens. And the, the truth of the matter is your eyesight is not what it used to be. And I know that ophthalmologists will give you a reason why your eyesight may appear to be deteriorating. But this is what the Bible says. The Bible says this. The Bible says it wax, that is my eyes, it wax old because of all my enemies. And so because of the enemies we have had to see, my God, if you only knew what some people have seen, the darkness that people have had to penetrate, the difficulty that people have had to persevere through. If you only knew the trouble, I think the, the old church used to sing, the old saying said, nobody knows the trouble I see, nobody knows but Jesus. And, and the enemies of life have been so that we have seen so much that it has caused our eyesight to become blurry. So here's what happens, is the more you deal with and the more you go through, the more enemies that you have had to come up against, the more tragedy that you have seen, it has a way of causing our sight to become blurry. And sometimes, if we're not careful, our assessment of our difficulties can make matters seem worse than what they really are. In other words, if you're not careful, you can go through so much stuff until you don't, you don't think you'll ever come through. You can deal with so many things until you can get to a place where you don't think things will ever get better. If you're not careful, you can get to a place because of some of the things that you see and have known and have gone through, you begin to interpret life by what you see rather than by the word of God. Notice, remember, notice, we walk by faith and not by sight. Because what you see may be damaging and what you see may look like you are defeated. But I come today to tell you, child of God, you cannot depend on your eyesight to determine your victory. The lines between defeat and victory can become blurred by what and how we see ourselves in our circumstances. You may see yourself like David standing before Goliath. And when David stands before Goliath, David looks as though he is no match for Goliath. I don't know what your Goliath is today. I'm talking to somebody right now. You need to catch this. Your Goliath may or may not be coronavirus number 19. And I know that while this pandemic is going on, we are also facing so many other issues and so many other concerns. Some people were dealing with stuff even before this pandemic hit. Some of you are dealing with giants in your life. You've got giants of relationships. Your relationship is on the rock. Some of you health-wise, it may not have been this coronavirus, but your health may not have been well. Some of you had financial difficulties and problems. It was a giant. And when you looked at all that was stacked up against you, you had more month than you had money. And it looked like the bills were 
piling up and before you could get one thing taken care of there was something else piling up on top of it and it looked like there was no way out I'm talking to somebody right now you had already waved the flag of surrender you said it was over but I come to tell you today do not allow what you see to determine your victory you know it can appear that we are further from victory than we are so what do we do sometimes we give up we give up too soon we don't cross over into occupying what God has already conquered I want to tell you before you wave that flag of surrender shut your eyes you can't see anyway go on and close your eyes and start having a talk with Jesus listen the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God and the word of God says that God always causes us to triumph I dare you to begin saying I'm coming through this yeah you got to speak it you got to speak it you got to speak it until you believe it can I say it again you've got to speak it until you believe it you may start saying it and it may be mere words that's coming from your mouth at first but you got to speak it until you believe it let me tell you you got to talk yourself into faith how many of you how many of you have have been talked into things salesmen came around to sell you on something and at first you didn't want it but the more they talk before you knew it you were signing the dotted line can I tell you that's the way it is with the word of God that's why it is so important to make ourselves available for the preaching and the teaching of God's word that's why you got to read the word that's why you got to meditate on the word that's why you got to hear it again and again and again and again because the more you hear it the more you're prone to believe it now um, well, I know what somebody may say. Well, that's 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 the hype. Let me ask you the question: What hype are you believing? What hype are you believing? Turn in your Bibles to John chapter sixteen, verse number thirty-three. John chapter sixteen, verse number thirty-three. John chapter sixteen, verse number thirty-three. Here's what the Bible says: These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Let me ask this question again. What hype are you believing? Now, you can read the word of God, and if you're not careful, you can place your emphasis on the wrong portion. The Bible says, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace in the world you shall have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world now in that passage back in and of itself Jesus reminds us that in the world we will have tribulation now, if we're not careful because we have been told that we will have tribulation we can have a greater expectation for the tribulation than we have for the victory. I need you to catch me. Come on. If you're not careful, you can walk around and you can be whining and moaning. The Bible said we were going to have tribulation. The Bible said we were going to go through this. And if you're not careful, you can live in the A portion and never get to the B portion. And even though the Bible says we shall have tribulation, you got to remember the Bible did not stop there. There is what I call a divine conjunction. Jesus says, but. And anytime you see the word but in the middle of a sentence, that but invalidates everything that has come before it. And so even though he says you shall have tribulation, don't you stop at the tribulation. Don't you get caught in the tribulation. Don't you stay in the tribulation. You've got to declare, but be of good cheer. you got to start shouting. Listen, I like this because what happens, he says, I have overcome the world. Listen, he says, be of good cheer. And notice that the good cheering comes before he says, you're going to overcome the world. Here it is, because you know you're going to overcome, 
even before you overcome, you can go on and start shouting. Come on. Somebody ought to praise God on credit right where you are, right? Those of you who are looking online, those of you who are listening to this radio, listen, if you're not driving your car, you can shout where you are. If you're driving and you feel a shout coming on, pull over on the side and give God some praise. Because even though you're going through some things right now, listen, you got to understand that a prophecy has been prophesied over your life. You shall overcome and I dare you to look at every condition and speak to every enemy that has raised its ugly head against you and you begin to prophesy to that enemy and say enemy you may have launched your attack but I'm coming over I'm gonna overcome I'm gonna win I'm going to win. I shall not be defeated. And the reason I shall not be defeated is because the God I serve has already declared that he always causes me to triumph. And when you can live with that kind of attitude that you are a winner, then it does not matter what you face. Too many believers, even during this season, has been walking around in fear. Now, don't get me wrong. But I'm not trying to say that you should not use good judgment. I'm not trying to say that you should not practice social distancing, that you should not um, be at home. I'm not try I'm trying to say that you shouldn't do all of those things. That's a part of our faith. Don't, don't get it confused. Don't get it twisted. You should do all of those things. But at the same time, you should not operate in fear, of, afraid of what could happen. I, I tell you, I'm celebrating what I know is going to happen. Did you catch that? Too many people are afraid of what could happen as opposed to celebrating what they know is going to happen. It could or could not be that this thing touched you. But I know what's going to happen. <laughs> I know Jesus has already conquered it. Because Jesus has already conquered it. Guess what? I'm already celebrating what I know. That's what you need to do. Focus on what you know and not what could happen. Too many believers are operating with something we call spiritual my, uh, myopia. You know, uh, myopic. You know, when, when, when th th that's, that's a term. Myopia is a term. It's a medical term for what we call nearsightedness. And people who are nearsighted see objects clearly when they are close to their eyes. But while distant objects are in the distance, it looks blurry because they can't see too far. Reading close up things may be clear, but distant vision is blurry. And sometimes amid the challenges and conditions of life, what is immediate in view is what occupies our vision. Sometimes it's our inability to overcome because in our inability to see the victory that is right before us. Sometimes we're focusing more on the trouble that is staring us in the eye than the victory that is waiting for us at the finishing line. We need God to change our perspective so that we can see the victory that God has given us. I'm getting ready to close and I want to close on this note. There is one theologian who says something I think is so powerful. Here's what he says. He says, you have to stop believing what you see and start seeing what you believe. I hope you caught that. He says, you have to stop believing what you see and start seeing what you believe. Do you really believe that you have the victory? Do you really believe that Jesus has conquered the last enemy, even death? Do you believe things are getting better in your life, in your condition, in your situation? Then you have got to get to a place where you stop believing what you see and start seeing what you believe. Last is our emotions. Sometimes our feelings are notorious liars they do not tell the whole story be careful that you do not even function according to your feeling because your feelings could tell you you're not going to make it but we do not operate on the basis of our feelings we operate on the basis of our faith in God 
Well, listen, that's it for today. I've had such a wonderful time teaching and sharing with you the word of God. I want to encourage you to share with us on Sunday morning, Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. on Praise Radio Station 89.1 FM. We'll be right here preaching and teaching the word of God. Meet us each Thursday at 12.30 and uh, of course live stream my bible study seven o'clock also on thursday night listen if you have young people in your house invite them to get on instagram at 6 30 follow reverend Bowles for our youth bible study want to send a shout out to all mothers and especially our first lady as we celebrate first ladies day this weekend god bless you thank you so kindly for being with us once again and listen remember stop believing what you see start seeing what you believe